Could you please provide your name, qualifications, current affiliations, and your area of research expertise? Uh, yeah, sure. So it's um, Fiona Stapleton, and I'm um, uh, affiliated at the um, University of New South Wales School of Optometry and Vision Science and the Faculty of Science. Oh, qualifications. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have an um, optometry degree from the University of Wales, um, master's degree from the University of Manchester, and PhD from City University. Um, I have a, a member of the fellow of the UK College of Optometrists, and I have a DCLP from the College of Optometrists, and uh, my um, therapeutics qualification from the University of Melbourne. That's that's a fair bit. Not bad. So congratulations on being the 2018 recipient of the H. Barry Collin Research Medal. How did you feel when you received the congratulatory letter? Absolutely humbled, um, surprised and humbled, actually. It was, um, you know, amazing to have been nominated and to have been selected, I think, particularly when you see the, um, the list of previous recipients. So, no, absolutely thrilled and humbled by that. Excellent. Yeah, I understand it's, it is quite an illustrious list, um, so... Yeah, definitely congratulations again. So well done. Now, if I dive into something a bit more specific to the article that you uh, wrote for CXO, yeah. the type of research that you do obviously contributed significantly to your nomination and subsequent winning of the award. In your own words, why is the research you do so important? Um, well, everyone thinks what they do is important, don't they? <laughs> um, so, look, I, I think that from my perspective, um, I'm very interested in making contact lens wear safer for the community. And I think that's driven a lot of the research that I've done. Um, so I think I can probably explain my research in terms of understanding um, how common complications are with contact lens wear, particularly corneal infection. And, and the reason that's important is it can result in um, loss of sight as well as significant cost and, and morbidity to the individual. Um, but also trying to understand a little bit more about why these things happen. So delving into the, the pathophysiology, understanding about the organisms that cause infection, understanding the host response, um, and understanding whether interventions can modify the disease. So can we can we modify it and then can we measure whether those, um, those interventions have actually modified the disease at all? So I, I think it's about making contact lens wear safe. Which, and I understand it's um, progressed in leaps and bounds in perhaps the last few years or the last decade compared to maybe 10, 20 years ago where everybody was using, I think it was a rigid gas permeable RGP lenses and now we've got a lot more kind of choice in terms of making it safer and more accommodating for people who may not have worn contact lenses before. Yeah, that's right. And, and it, it, is, um, it is important because there's been lots of changes, as you say, in terms of new technologies and it's, it's really understanding whether they've made a difference in terms of um, complications and certainly with uh, things like highly oxygen permeable lenses we see a, a great change in oxygen related complications for example so that's been a, a really interesting area because that intervention has really made a huge difference in terms of the epidemiology. So in your paper you also discuss the many risk factors that can cause issues with contact lenses including contact lens related microbial keratitis um, and from your perspective, which risk factor is the easiest to prevent and why? So it's a, that's a really interesting question because there's been a lot of this work done over a, a long period of time. And one of the approaches that I've tried to take is to try and understand the key risk factors. So that means that, um, you know, how much bang do you get for your buck if you address a particular risk factor? And I guess the things that are really important for contact lens related infection are Overnight wear, so limiting um, the degree and the extent of overnight wear is really important. We know that um, hand washing and drying before handling lenses is another big one in terms of the impact that has on the disease load. And for people who wear reusable lenses, then attention to what they're doing with their contact lens storage case is really important. So I'd, I'd say that those would be my top three um, in terms of the most impact on the disease load. I think that almost answers the next question as well, which is how can a practicing optometrist apply your research in this area to their day-to-day -day practice? And from a risk point of view, it sounds like all the, well, I say basic without wearing contact lenses, but all the, all the hygiene-related basic stuff seems to be a really good entry point. But I suppose if there's any other area of your research that an optometrist can apply, um, which one would you suggest that that might be? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question because the, we talk a lot about hygiene and compliance um, and 
it's actually quite difficult to change the dial on that. It is about the sort of meaningful interactions with practitioners and, and having the conversations in a way that allows people to tell you what they actually do rather than what they think you want to hear. <laughs> yeah. An opportunity to, um, to have a conversation about the impact that, that those things have and how you might change them. And there's some, there are some interesting things that are being explored um, in the contact lens area and in other areas about how to provide the right kind of messaging. So there's one that's um, being explored at the moment that we've done a little bit of work around, and that's um, uh, graphics to try and prevent water use with um, contact lenses. So either rinsing cases or, you know, uh, sadly doing things with the, the contact lenses themselves. And so that's an area that we've been seeing whether... If you, uh, if you use these graphics on contact lens cases, whether that can also modify behavior. So it is hard to modify behavior, so that's, that's not one of the, um, the easiest things to do. But there are a couple of other things that, from a practicing optometrist perspective, that are important. Um, we know that the risk of infection is higher in sort of novice wearers in that first six months. So having a, a system whereby um, perhaps patients are seen a little bit more frequently in that early period of wear makes sense. And I think another one in terms of um, perhaps reducing severity of disease might be um, making sure that, that people know that if they start to experience symptoms, that they need to return to their practitioner promptly. So um, I guess the poorest outcomes are where people delay seeking help. So that's one where, again, a conversation of, you know, if you have any problems or any uncertainties, you know, give the practice a call or come and see me. Um, and we can just put your mind at rest. Those kind of, perhaps they're not interventions, but they're opportunities for conversations because those kind of things can make a difference. And it's really important from an infection perspective that people get to a practitioner who has a slit lamp. Okay, that's um, all the questions I've got written down here for this interview. So thanks very much for your time, Fiona. All right, uh, well, nice to meet you. You too, <laughs> thank you.